professional drummer. And I, and I, I actually got to meet two professional drummers since I've been living in uh, the Atlanta area. And okay. I got to tell you, those those boys are bad. Um, Kendall Newson, who was an NFL player for the Miami Dolphins, and okay. Garrett Hunter, both very, very great uh, drum players. And I was like, man, these wow. guys are so, I mean, really good. So how long have you been playing the drums? I've been playing since I was six years old. So mm-hmm. over 20 years, over t- well over 20 years. And professionally, it's been... 20 years about 21 years now so how so, had that how has been able to play the drums did, did that play a major role in in you working with great people like you know mary J and and your wife of course i heard sw uh coco was your wife uh, yes ma'am songstress that was is that how you met her playing the drum um yes actually oh. um we have and the funny thing about that story is when we first met when i was playing for the group people thought oh you guys must have messed around then no we couldn't stand each other back then really Yes. Um, now, if you hear her t- tell it, she says I was arrogant. I don't believe that. And, uh, and, and, and she and I and she was kind of, you know, on the mean side back then, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so it's, it's, you know, we was in just two different places. Um, and, you know, I, I just never would have thought that she would be my wife. You know, I wasn't interested in her back then until we um, saw each other again. Um, and it's in the it's in my book as well. But um, we saw each other at a, um, at a recording in New York. And um, it's just kind of from there, we exchanged numbers and we went out a few times. And it was like, then I went off the very next week, I went off to play with Usher. Mm-hmm. So we kept in contact. She was in the play at the time. And we just um, kept in contact and it grew, it grew, it grew. And then we got married in six months. Wow. Well, you know what? Yes. You never know what God's plan is for you. Our yes. plan is not our plan. God has a plan for all of us. And you just yes. never know why he put people in your life. You know what I mean? So that's so that's a yes. great story, a really cool yes. story. So now being in the industry, two powerhouse and an industry that most people think is cutthroat and crazy, how do you make that all work? Uh, we're, we're very, okay. You know, we have a young one. I have two, two, two kids. One is 21 and he's out the house now. He's grown. Um, and my, um, my youngest is 13. We're very, very, very hands on with my 13 year old. Um, mm-hmm. we try not to be going at the same time. And if we do, we try to plan it. It's mm-hmm. very important for my youngest son to understand family, understand that we don't mm-hmm. take work before him. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and we're very big on that because, you know, a lot of times these kids get lost, especially, you know, entertainment, they get lost and they start doing things you don't want mm-hmm. them to do. So mm-hmm. we try to really keep that that ground, you know, that, that you know, with him and keep him grounded with 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 the whole, you know, um, family, 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 family. So so mm-hmm. with us being gone a lot, um, we either take him with us on the weekends or my mother-in-law lives out here with us, too. Mm-hmm. So at least he's around her. Mm-hmm. And, and we check on him every day if we're gone. But for the most part, you know, we're we're pretty home. We're pretty much home during the week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so it's like you guys have a really great family balance, which is so, so important as a, yeah. as a business owner and a musician in, in the entertainment industry as well. So I, I know that's pretty cool. That's a great thing. I, I, I was talking to my brother yesterday. He's a coach. And he said to me, he's not coaching this year. He said to me, man, I didn't know what I was missing because he's been coaching for so long. Because now he's not coaching to be home with his family. He has three kids. And I said, yeah. I said, one thing about that, the kids will let you know when you need to be home with them. If, if, if you're gone all the time, they'll let you know. They'll start acting out and doing little things. And then when you, you actually step back and see all of that, you say, okay, this is a great place for me to be. So that's a cool yeah, That's really good because my son is like that too. He's like, uh both of y'all going even now he likes mm-hmm. me being home he said like, he's still 13 so he's in that ever since he was about 11 he's been more around me you know he mm-hmm. went from mama's boy to okay i'm growing up like he was talking about a kid who literally started making up his own bed at like five years old well that's a good kid you know? right there yeah yeah he was you know it was like no more baby in him my wife has a problem with it because she mm-hmm. likes to baby him he's like no, he's tall for his age, so he looks like he's 16. He's only 13. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's it's interesting how kids are, you know, how they, you know, go from both parents to maybe one to another. It's it's, it's very interesting. <laughs> well, that's cool. I mean, five years old making up a bed. You got some 21 year old who won't make up their bed right now. So that's. Cool. And, and we didn't believe it. He, like, we messed it up. We, 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 got, we got messed it up, and he was like, okay, make it up. And he made that bed up, and we were both like, are you, you seeing what I'm seeing? I mean, the same way they do in the hotel. I mean, he tucked it in. I mean, he, but he's a watch. He watches. He, you know, mm-hmm. and once he watched something, I mean, he would, like, he knew when he was little, when he's, where his clothes was, mm-hmm. and he would crawl out the bed watching us, crawl out backwards, 
and go to the cup. He couldn't he couldn't reach the cubby, but he would go to it to get his you know his shirt out for what he's you know for what you know for his clothes. But he knew that when he was crawling. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's weird. It's it's crazy how these you know these these new millennium kids are. <laughs> okay. So now, two parents in the industry. Is that something he aspired to do, or he has his own path he want to take? He has his own path. Um, he wants to be a, a dentist. Nice. Yes, he wants to be a dentist. I mean, he, now, now he has music in him. He you know he plays piano. You know he sings. He's very shy, so we try to get him out of that. But he plays in church for the youth choir mm-hmm. and things like that. But um. He doesn't, he's not in it like, okay, I want to be in the music industry. Mm-hmm. He's not like, he loves to travel now and spend money. Mm-hmm. Besides mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's stuck on being a dentist and he's running track now. So he, he tries to, he wants his own identity. And I like mm-hmm. that, at him being the age he's at. He's not trying to, you know, well, you guys are this and that. So I can, he's not like that. So oh, I, that's I, I, I really commend him with that. That's, that's wonderful. So now tell us, um, uh, Jody was telling me about your amazing weight loss uh, she told me a little bit about it. She said she was gonna let me to let you tell me the story. Mm-hmm. That's something I've been belling my entire. When I tell you my entire life, I've the things I could tell you I've done to to drop the weight. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I'm probably like most people out there, but you were able to lose in a in a, a, a huge amount of weight. Please share that story with us. Um, well, basically, um, how it started was with diabetes. You know, mm-hmm. I was I was I was overweight most of my life, you know, from mm-hmm. probably 13, 12, 13 and on up, you know. And um, it's always been a battle of mine. What happened was um, I was diagnosed with, di- with diabetes and um, I almost died. My sugar mm-hmm. level was up to like 600 and something. And um, it became serious for me. And I realized at that moment um, that I needed to live for my family. You know, it's mm-hmm. not fair to them that, you know, I, I go through this you know, this, this battle and not think about them. And, and it got serious. I mean, my own son, and I talk about it in the book, my own, my own son had sat me down and he was probably about seven or eight then. And he said, you know, uh, we don't want you to die basically. And you need to wow. be taken seriously. And that hit home for me. I cried. I hit home for me because, you know, I realized I was being selfish. You right. know, like, a lot of people, they need the, you know, they're diagnosed with diabetes and they don't take it seriously or they, they say, you know, well, I can, you know, go to the gym and sweat it out. But it's, it's more to it than that. And when it runs mm-hmm. in my family and probably yours and a lot of a lot of African-American families or families, period, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's something that you want to try to break. And I don't want my son to go, you know, to get to that point either. It runs on my wife's side and my side. So mm-hmm. um, I, I decided to take it serious. I decided to um, to basically lose the weight. And I did it in a year natural i worked hard no cheat days i mean my mind was so trained that it was if i'm gonna eat that i'm gonna die mm-hmm. literally wow. so and and i trained my mind and a lot of people um think that you know working out is the key and working out only speeds up what you're trying to do if you don't eat right if you don't get mm-hmm. on a on a good you know diet not not diet per se you know, uh, I say a lifestyle change because diet to me is temporary. You, know, I want to mm-hmm. diet for this vacation or diet for the wedding. Or diet, you know, but when like, you make a lifestyle a lifestyle change, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's it's totally different. If and for me, um, I had to make a lifestyle change, and I've been on that road since. I'm I'm over 150 pounds less right now. Wow, and that's still, that's great. And still going. I'm not satisfied, even though people say, "Well, you know, you know, I'm I'm." I gotta be happy with me, and you know, and, and my self esteem went up. Um, just everything, my health, my my doctors, like I'm so proud of you because none of yeah. his patients have done this before. Mm-hmm. So, so it's something that you know, for, it meant a lot to me for him to say that. Then my wife and everybody's proud of me, and I feel better. I feel younger. I took, I took, you know, you know, I went from I'm 40 years old now, and I, I feel like I'm 20. I can hang with mm-hmm. the young kids. You know what I mean? I you think know- it's important. I was just talking to my husband yesterday. I said, I said, isn't it crazy how your mind say you're 20, but your body's saying 80? He started laughing, but it's the truth, you know, and it's so, I was talking to Braxton. I interviewed Braxton probably about three weeks, four weeks ago, and okay. I have his book. And so I started reading the book, and that was the first book I had read that that put biblical principles mm-hmm. to uh, weight loss and lifestyle change. And I was like, this is, and I've read them all. So this is the first book I've read that incorporates lifestyle changes with biblical principles. But I kind of started using the book. I read a little bit of it. And I said, okay, I'm going to make some real lifestyle changes. See, my issue when I was growing up, it was overeating. When I got older, it was overachieving. 
you. Got so you. Got I went from one extreme to the next extreme. So being an overachiever, it's like, when do you eat? And then yeah, when you yeah. eat, when are you eating? So that became my issue. But like you, I'm on that journey as well because I still feel 20 in my mind, mm-hmm. but my body says something different. You know, yeah, when yeah. I was 20 and I was a big girl, I was 20 and a big girl. I right. my body matched my mind. I right. ain't 20 and a big girl now. I'm like 49 and a big girl, and they don't they don't go together. So, but but, but older you get, people understand. Older you get, your metabolism slows down, things like that, and you really have to. Um, I mean, eating. People say, "Oh, I'm eat once a day." That doesn't work. Or I'm going to eat no carbs. That doesn't work. Like, do something that is going to fit your lifestyle, but at the same Mm -hmm. time makes makes a change. And it's got to stick to reality. You Mm -hmm. can't go so so extreme to the point where when you do eat something, you blow back up. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I'm going to do, you know, a handful, this handful. No, no. Like for me, I eat I eat about six times a day. Right. You know, but it's what I eat when I eat it. And when you start understanding the food and understanding what it does to you, I cook. I don't eat out like that. If I do, I tell the chef, oh, I don't want no salt. I make it bland. You know, mm-hmm. you know, is there certain things that you do, you know, certain restaurants you go to that um that, that will prepare it the way you want. If I get broccoli, no butter, no, no nothing, I just steam it. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. so it's almost like your home, you don't have to accept everything that they, they do in a restaurant. They can change some things, they can't change everything. Mm-hmm. But they mm-hmm. can change some things on how they prepare the food for you before it comes mm-hmm. out. And I think those kind of things are important, even with your salads. You know, make sure you get the dressing on the side, and, you know, and don't put the whole thing on there. You know what I mean? It's just little things that will help you. People, think, I got a salad today. Okay, what you have on it? Oh, I had uh, this dressing bad for you, or I had you know the best dressing to me is oil and vinegar, straight oil yeah. and vinegar. You mm-hmm. can't you can't go wrong with that. The less calories. Period. You can't go with a creamy, you know, anything with a creamy and it's is is it's mayonnaise in it. You know what right. I mean? There's things that you know when you do those, those research, you know, and it becomes serious. So I think, you know, when you start when, when you start thinking like that, it, it makes a difference. You'd be surprised how the how the weight drops off before the gym. You know what, Mike, that's so true. I remember um something I was I was I had started changing my lifestyle, whatever. I love Chick-fil-A cop salad, right? So I'm thinking it's a salad. I'm good. But here's the thing. I was getting like three packs of the avocado ranch dressing. And that dress is so, great. <laughs> right. But three packs of it. So I looked something. I, I don't know. I think I was charting like my calories or something. When I looked at the back of the pack and how much calories was in that one little pack, it was 300 calories per pack. Times three. Like, you Time know, and three. so the salad was 1,100, but the salad dressing was nine. And it was like, okay, I just ate all my calories in one setting. People don't think like that. They think because oh, it's a salad. Okay, you know, and and with me, and I do Chick Fil A. You know, I, I do a Chick Fil A salad, but and I love the avocado ranch. But what I do, I don't use the whole thing. I use a little bit of it. And you gotta. It's just about training your mind. We we as African American are trained to if it got gravy on it, it or it's too dry. So you know that that's all. That's all I was. You know, and I had mm-hmm. to realize no, taste the food. Don't taste. Mm-hmm. Don't make something. That you put on it, make try to make it taste better, or that's your taste. But no, no, get out of that. Go cold turkey and taste the actual food, and you will actually realize. Wow, folks ask me all the time. That's all dressing you putting on there, or oh, that's it. You don't drink. You don't, you don't like eat, you put gravy on your food. No, I don't. I'm sorry, and I love it. You don't, you don't like it. Yes, I do. Don't tell me what I love. You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. training your mind because I want to live longer. And once, mm-hmm. and, and once you get to that point in life where it's life or death. You know, you got to do what you got to do. I, I don't like for people to to go through what I went through. And it's like, okay, uh, you know, you have to, you're made now to lose weight. Lose the mm-hmm. weight, get on a healthy path before you, the doctor makes you do it. Because then it's a whole different story. That is true. That is true. Ooh, wise information, wise information. And I tell you, I've been getting a lot of it. And I know that all the information that I've been getting from people like you and Braxton, I know that's just God, you know, just just getting to, to, to talk to you all. And um, about this whole thing, I know that's God. So I'm really, you know, thank you for that information and sharing. No problem. Tell, us, tell me about the wiggle, cause I love the wiggle. Like I, my goal is to have my knee surgery and do the wiggle. I was like, I love line dancing. Um, and then I saw your video. I was like, oh, I like this. Tell me what you got to do that. Well, um, it, it, it's crazy because we wasn't trying to make it a so-called line dance. It was a song that I came up with. Um, couple months back, um, me and my writing partner, um, Joey, um, Joanna Jones, um, that, you know, and, and, and we want to do a fun song that, mm-hmm. you know, so, so I came up with the beat, me and my brother, and, and we was just, you know, 
going, you know, and I started, you know, wiggle, what, you know, it's just kind of the idea started coming. So we started writing this song, and uh, and 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 it, and it came up, you know, let's put a dance in it because it sounds like it'd be a, you know, a dance. I, I was, I think, mm-hmm. I was in the studio going, you know, just, you know, just doing some stuff, and it was like. Mm-hmm. I can see a dance to this. So she started writing this little, you know, put your hands up. You know, it started, we started mm-hmm. vibing with it. Next thing you know, it became a dance. But so this song, I don't want people to think this song is a, this song is a song first. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then, but it ha- it's a song that happens to have a, a, a dance in it, a line dance in it. Mm-hmm. And, you mm-hmm. know, so, so, but, but the dances came up and people are loving it. Like I'm, I'm, I get videos every day. I just got a video last night of somebody doing it by the pool. You know, wow. and now I got fitness people who are tagging me and, and sending me videos. Like, it's just amazing what God does. It's amazing what he's doing with this song alone. And mm-hmm. I'm just so grateful. And I got to see you do it. You have to get that knee surgery. I know. As soon as I get my surgery, I'm going to do it because I got to tell you something. I was at Weight Watchers one time mm-hmm. and um, I'm, a, I'm a workaholic now. Like I told you, I went to the other extreme. I'm a workaholic, but I was at Weight Watchers one time. And so um, the lady said, what do you do? Like, how, how do you get your exercise? I said, well, I get up and I wobble. And she said, wobble? What is that? I said, that's a dance. So it was a room full of white women who had never heard of the wobble. But then the leader was black. And she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. So I'm I'm, I'm getting my knee surgery. And you're going to see me. I'm put, my, put up my wiggle video. That's right. Do it. Do it sitting down. You can do it. In, in, you know, you can do that's it anywhere true. you want. It's no, there's true. no, there's a tutorial on, um, on, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know, on the, the the real way to do it, but people just do it their way. You know, and 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 I love it. I love the way you know the kids may do it. They may put the, you know, hit the folks in it. You know, they just they just they just add their little you know kids. They add their twist to everything. Um, you know, but I think it's um it's, I would love to see you do it. You know, and mm-hmm. and I got to give a shout out to my wife because she pushed me to do, you know, to 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 do this artist thing. Mm-hmm. You know, she, you know, it, it was, it was like, you know, I, I was on the road with Israel Houghton for, you know, about nine years. And when I mm-hmm. came off with him, you know, she was like, you know, you really need to do you. You really need to focus on your brand, focus on you as an artist. And she saw this stuff in me before I saw it. You know, mm-hmm. I've been producing for years, of course. People know that, you know, but she, but, you know, it was just, she pushed me. And I was scared to do it. I was nervous. I was like, well, people don't like it. Well, you know, you know, your eyes stuff goes because something mm-hmm. new for me. And when mm-hmm. I realized, um, you know, I went to the studio and when I realized, wow, this is really cool. And I started recording, recording, recording more and more songs. And she was even like, wow, like this you and this is you. And, this, you know, it, it was a mm-hmm. blessing. So I got to give a shout out to her because if she didn't push me to do it, we would probably wouldn't be talking right here. You know what I mean? So 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 I got to give honey. I love you. I got to give a shout how out. How sweet. Her. How sweet. So now so you had the single and you have you got the album coming out soon. Um. No date yet. Um, I'm trying yeah. to work this single. It's, it's being it's being picked up every week. You know, shout out to the radio stations that are that that, that are playing it and and mm-hmm. and giving me love on it. Um, I don't have a um album with a release date yet because I mm-hmm. want to make sure this single gets the you know get the the the, the props that it needs to get. You know, I have mm-hmm. two re- I have two remixes coming. I have a a trap remix for the kids. Okay. And I have a Bogo remix coming out soon as well. Okay. The Bogo remix is bananas you know and if you like the reno you're gonna no hype you're gonna love the go-go remix okay all right i'm looking it'll forward to that maybe by that time my knee will be ready i'll be able to do the go-go remix. you're gonna need the knee for that because it's, it's totally different than it, like what i like about you know me being a producer um you know puts me a whole different mind frame as you know artists and a producer because you know my thinking is different you know and i'm like okay how can i get the most out of the song you know we're doing a dance mix you know we're doing mm-hmm. so many different remixes and because it's our song because we wrote it because we own it we can do what we want you know what mm-hmm. i mean and, and and i'm trying to come out with i'm trying to go back to the days of of how it used to be max singles where you have more than one mix you know people can choose mm-hmm. what they want to hear and everything sounds different I'm, you know we're going back to that we dream entertainment group is going back to the way it used to be developing artists, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and really making the best of, of, of what you're doing. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. be on the lookout for that. So now speaking of that, you know, the, the industry has changed so much. The music industry has changed so much and people still want to, you know, people still have aspirations, dreams of being in that industry. Right. What would you say to them? Like, which, like I was in a meeting with a young man on Monday mm-hmm. and he, his dreams to be in, in the industry. What do you say to those people who want to be in the industry? 
the way it is right now, is it a good place to be? What do they need to get to that point where, you know, they're putting out singles and people are hearing their music and, you know, it's getting heard on the radio and things like right. that? What would you say to that person? Um, it's different now. It's, it's more work. Um, labels don't want to do the work that they used to do. You know, labels, mm-hmm. you know, if your social media is up, it's like, oh, they, this, this work is social media. And now people are becoming stars off of social media. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, got, mm-hmm. you got a million followers. It's like, who are you? I ain't never heard of you. You know, mm-hmm. so, so it's like, it's totally different in that way. It's not, there's no art development. There's no, um, you know, you know, there's no, um, what you call it? Um, oh, God, what's the name of it? There, there, there's no showcases. There's no, you know, there's nobody showing people how to be an artist, developing them. And I think that's missing now because now you have people who just come out and say, where does this person come up? You know, where did it come from? Mm-hmm. Things like that. It's totally different. Using social media more. I think social media is great, but I still believe in street teams. I still believe in doing mm-hmm. work, you know, that you're supposed to do to, to, to make the, you know, the best of that record. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that's not happening no more. It's more or less of, okay, who you know, you know, you got somebody's cousin in there who don't know what they're doing. You know, mm-hmm. so this has changed mm-hmm. so much and we're trying to go back to okay let's do it right you know Mm -hmm. you know my wife has a group ttyl and we're developing Mm -hmm. them you know it's Mm -hmm. not it's 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 not we're not we're not going to throw people out there to 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 just you know be 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 overtaken by the industry let's teach them you know let's Mm -hmm. show them let's show them arts development how to talk how to conduct yourself how there's none of that going on everybody's ratchet you know the more ratchet you are the more the more dumb things you do the more famous you get Right, it's, you know, it's totally different than what it used to be, and it's it's, it's sad, and I, and I get it, I, I get it. You know, time goes by, and and time is different now, but it's it's still a different situation that I'm trying not to, you know, not trying to go there. I'm trying to do it the right way. <laughs> so, do you think going back to the to, to the traditional way of how we used to do music, do you think it can it be as successful as you know back then because things are so different now? I think it can if you use both. Mm-hmm. I think okay. if you go with social media, I mean, social media, you know, everybody's on social media every day. So I think it's a great thing. I think it's an easy way and it, and it saves money. But mm-hmm. I also think you need to get out there and do the work. I think you need mm-hmm. to, again, street teams. I think you need to to really, you know, have people with you that's down for you and, and willing to do the work for you, you know, mm-hmm. and with you and work hard mm-hmm. because, it's, you know, it's not easy. I don't want to rely on social media because, because you can have a million followers and sell 10, 10 units. You get what I'm saying? Right. Just because you know you have a million followers doesn't mean everybody's gonna buy you gonna, gonna buy that album or that single. And it happens every day. And I think people rely on, well, I got this many followers. So if I get this and that, no, you, you know, it's about it's about how you're gonna and how you're gonna get them to buy what you have going on. What's gonna make them click that buy button? And that's what it's really about. So it's just a lot of things you have to do in order for you to get to that point. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the case. Every artist up there, you know, will, will be platinum and, you know what I mean? It doesn't happen right. that way. So it's, it's still a lot of work to me, but I think it can be done. Mm-hmm. Does an artist need a, a label right now? Or does an artist just need a great team? A great team, um, labels. I mean, a label helps money-wise, but if you have a great team and a, and a little, little money saved away, I think you can make some stuff happen. Okay. All right. I think, I think I think indie is great. I'm not I'm not scared of anything. One thing you know about I'm not scared of anything. I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna win. Trust me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I All think right. I, I think if you have that mindset and you have a great team around you and you're willing to be patient and you're willing to mm-hmm. to just do the work for, I think it. I think it, you know it'll go up slowly, but it go. Right, right. There are a lot of great uh, platforms out there to distribute your stuff as an independent artist. You got iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, all these guys, Amazon. You know, you can put your music pretty much anywhere. anywhere. So that being said, when when a when a when a Spotify or Pandora come to you, because you know it's always a whole lot of hoopla behind them and how they pay people and you know all that stuff. What do you say to them? Do you say yes, I'm going to be on Pandora, or Spotify? Do you say no, or you just negotiate the best deal for you? Um. Both. I think, you, 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 you know, you do the best deal for you, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's good to be on the, like, I'm on Spotify. I'm on, I'm on every digital outlet, um, mm-hmm. you know, for them to really, um, you know, push the single. But um, and I think it's a good thing because you want, because everybody's on somebody who may be on Amazon or on iTunes. Everybody doesn't have an iPhone. So, mm-hmm. you know, some people go to Google Play. You know what I mean? It's, you know, mm-hmm. so so I think it's, it's great to be on those, those sites, and, you know, but um, at the same time, um, I don't think it hurts you. I just think it depends on what your what your goal is. 
mm-hmm, and what you're mm-hmm. trying to do, you know. But I mean, it's important that you be on this stuff, especially as a new artist, because you want to get your music out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so now tell us a little bit about your book. I know you got a book. Tell us about the book and, and what's your goal for the book? You know, why did you write the book? The book, yes, my book, My Life and Story. Um, I wrote the book um, because I wanted to, for people to hear my story. Mm-hmm. I wanted them to know me more as 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 my battles of what I come from. You know, I'm from Stratford, mm-hmm. Connecticut. Shout out to Stratford, Connecticut. <laughs> and um and you know and I want them to 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 know okay Mike Clemens the personal side you know mm-hmm. how I battled the diabetes how I've been through you know my father left us at thirteen you know things like that and and, and I want people to know you know that that you still can overcome you know your 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 obstacles you know everything mm-hmm. is not you know don't count you out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just really work hard to, to get where you got to get from. So I really wanted to write the book. I'm teamed up with, you know, with Braxton on it because um, I felt like he was a good fit. Um, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's a great author, great mm-hmm. writer, and he helped me write it. And I think, um, I, th- I, I, I really like the book. And I hope you guys out there, all of you, I hope you like the book too. <laughs> now tell us the title and tell us where to get the book. Um, you can get the book at um, any any digital out, you know, any digital outlet, uh, you know, um, um, I do my website as well, bigmikeclemens.com, B-I-G-M-I-K-E-C-L-E-M-O-N-S.com. Um, you can get it through Amazon, you know, every any, anywhere, anywhere who sells books, you can get it. And um, the, right. book, the, the name, of, name of the book is um, Big Mike Clemens, or Mike Clemens, and then My Life and Story. All right, all right. Mike Clemens. Man, this has been a really great interview. I want to thank you so thank much you. for taking the time to hang out with me for this uh, short period of time. I look forward to hearing you. More about what you're doing, and I will be wiggling soon. Don't you worry. I'll Come on, my- you got wiggle and send me the video, make it happen. I'm still at the uh-huh. gym. I'm outside. I came outside to the interview, and guess what? I'm going right back in the gym right after this. All right, all right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Hey, go to um, uh, give us your website again. I'm gonna type it in here. Give me your website again. Okay, it's www.bigmikeclemens, which is lemons with a C in front. Mm-hmm. Big Mike C L E M O N S dot com. And from there, you can get to my Twitter, my Instagram, all my social medias on there. I'm, I'm, I'm actually big Mike Clemens on every social media. Now he, ain't, he's not big anymore, y'all. He just still like that name. Well, you he, know, um, I still, I, I, I still walk, walk big and play. Now I play drums still big. Hey, hey, I'm, okay. You're not right. messing with me. I, I, don't, I, I ain't no softy. <laughs> uh, you know what? I would love for you to meet with uh, Gareth and Kendall. It would not, you know, he did a drum clinic. Gareth is from a um Valdosta, Georgia. And he, no, 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 no. He's from Thomasville, Georgia. Okay. But he did a drum clinic last summer for kids, and I heard it was some amazing. Like the the um the uh, cable networks there picked it up, and it was like a, it was a big thing. And he was so proud because he had never done anything like that. And he wow. was working with the young lady who does my production for me, handles all my outside production. Mm-hmm. But it was like a big thing. Like the kids wanted to learn how to play, and he yeah. did a drum clinic, and it was wonderful. So maybe I'd once to meet him. Yeah, when you're in the central area, I'll set that up. It's two of them. Kendall, he played football for Miami Dolphins. And Let's Gary. make it happen. Let's but make it happen. We could, do, we could do a whole day. We could do a day. You know, my will is always We could do a day with the kids, do some yeah. clinics, let them hang out with us and have some fun. Like, okay. That's all I'm about. I'm, 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 on, I'm probably on five right now. I'm normally on 10. You okay. Know, I, I love to have fun. I love, love, love kids. And kids love me. So I'm, I'm always down for that. Just let me know. Yari has my information. Gotta give it to you. We can make that happen. Okay, I surely will. Well, thank you so much, and you enjoy the rest of your workout. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing my work. Thank you. Have a good one. Don't forget, send me that video. I will. I'm I hold will. you to it. I got you. I All got right. you. <laughs> So everybody, you've been listening to Talk Business with Audrey. My guest today was Mike, Big Mike Clemens. Make sure to go check him out, bigmikeclemens.com. And um, thank you again for watching. I'll be back again next week with another great guest. Until next time, make it a great day. Bye, Mike. Bye-bye.